get it started but derek thank you for for joining derek from dreamville i don't know even how to say your exact title because to me it's like head of marketing obviously on a lot of stuff we yeah. do together boz is manager um been there since the beginning um that's very clear it's in your dna and um oh. A lot of other things, man. I feel like you do a lot of shit for Dreamville in general. And yeah. at times, you know, like I I'm grateful that you're here and I I'm grateful we've gotten to know each other. Cause I, I remember like, I remember years ago waking up in a, a hotel at like 2 AM in North Carolina. And so I was sharing a room with Sasha and you came in and I was like passed out in the bed. I remember like opening her eyes and being like, all right, like that's one of the guys from Dreamville, but I didn't really know who. And you're talking just about boss shit, but you have this energy of like, what if we do this? What if we do that? When you do this, when you do that, when you do this, when you do... and it was just like, oh shit, you know? And it kind of always stuck with me because at, then at like random festivals and shit, I would see Boz and he was always like, he's always like so vocal with Sasha and everybody that he knows. And I'd see you. And then when we started working together a little bit, like I could see just the energy in a little bit more form of like, you know how you kind of go about it and jump into the shit yeah. you're doing and just aren't afraid to shoot shots and, and think of a thousand <laughs> ideas so um you know that's a little bit of background into how i viewed you going into it and mm -hmm. then how i see it now but um you know appreciate you you being here and joining us no doubt bro yeah man shit everything you said is facts dude <laughs> like <laughs> that energy uh that energy is there because niggas have been building like something where we all feel like it's our own shit, you know? So, uh, real talk. um, yeah, that's, that's why you see that energy in that motor. And then, you know, nigga Cole just showed us that we could do shit. So once you see, like, once you see that inspiration, then you're like, Oh shit, fuck, let's, let's go, let's go and try everything. You know, how long do we have to try everything? We might as well turn up and try to do it right now. So. Yeah, it's been like 10, 10, 11 years of just fucking grinding, trying to figure out how to do all the crazy ideas inside the inside the brain. Yeah, that's that's um incredible. I think there's like a obviously a really interesting story for me, because I like, you know, I, I see a little bit of it now, how and I wanna I want we're gonna go back. We always try to like start from as early as we possibly can find on the internet, you know, even if it's scrolling through you and Boz's long history or Fiend's history of Instagram posts. But um, like, it's interesting right now, I think how Dreamville's, like it's obviously a very real company beyond like the brand right behind the artists and all that stuff. But like now it feels like, oh sh like shit, this is becoming like a company, you know? Like in, yeah. this, in like a good way in the sense of like, um, it just keeps elevating, you know? Um, but at its core, it seems like it's still like the same kind of vibe and it's the same people um that have mm -hmm. been there since the beginning um mm -hmm. you know so i definitely am interested to get into a lot of that and how like the early days formed and then how a layer around that formed so on and so forth yeah i mean i remember sitting in quarantine and being like damn like just like damn i didn't really achieve the shit that i wanted to achieve in my life you know when everybody thought they were going to die off off rip and like it struck, it like dawned upon me that we've been doing this shit. It was the first time I had done something for 10 years straight, right? Like I, I was like really trying to like put pen to paper and think about that. Like what have you committed to for 10 years? And it wasn't basketball, it wasn't football. It wasn't the concert band, like all the shit that I had done my whole life, like nothing I'd ever dedicated for 10 years. But Dreamville, The Fiends, working with boss th this worked this was 10 years of something that i was um like really passionate into working so i was like yo that's something that like uh i shouldn't be jaded about or i, I should be proud about that shit. i shouldn't be like just dismissive of it um and then it made me challenge myself to be like all right cool what's the next 10 years look like right <clears throat> are you happy uh did you achieve your goals are you where you wanted to be or the person you thought you could be? And like, how do you do that for the next 10 years? I think that mirrors the same exact thing with Dreamville and the themes, right? Dreamville is about, we're in our second decade of being a company, right? And those first, you know, I, I got involved probably like 09 to 2010, 2009, 2010, you know, Cole and even Adam LinkedIn 07. 
So there was those first two years that I, I didn't get to experience with them, but then I got to see it like from nothing to like skyrocket, right? But, you know, I think if you talk to anybody that's an entrepreneur, whether it's in music like us or in tech or in fashion or whatever, they'll tell you those first couple of years are just like figuring, just trying shit and just figuring shit out. And I think like I read a stat that like most companies that start like don't turn a profit until like for the third or fourth year. And it's like, yo, that's a real thing. Like, and that's if you're lucky, right? That's if you're good at what you do. I know companies that have been working for eight, nine years and still aren't turning a profit, but they have this social capital that they've built and they just keep on building it in hopes that one day it goes. So like the reason why Troy, you're feeling the company expand and do other things is because about year nine, 10, I'm looking around, I'm talking to the homies, I see what the aspirations of the people are involved in. I'm like, yo, we could do other shit. Like <laughs> we, our, our authenticity and, and direct ties to the stories that we tell at Dreamville uh, music wise carries over into other things and to other verticals, you know, like other industries. Um, and like, we still are the same curators and in like, I don't want to say influencers, I hate that shit, but like tastemakers, like curators, like people that are like, yo, that's dope, that's dope, that's dope. Creators, like, yo, we want to make shit. Um, and like, that's the reason why it's still the core homies, right? It's still the same people that you met the first time we came to Texas. Yeah. Um, but, you know, since then we've added a couple people like, oh, yo, you fit our our culture as a family and you know what the fuck you're doing and you can help us grow into this. Rihanna, you can help us grow in apparel. Candice, you can help us grow in, in studios and movies and TV and film and podcasts. Like, so, um, yeah, man, this shit is like, I think, I think it started as a crazy passion and then it turned into um, an opportunity to do something that lasts like way longer than us. And you guys have done an incredible job at it. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, said, it's shit, is, shit is hard. <laughs> when you said authentic, like being authentic like that is literally yeah. one of the first words that comes yeah. to mind when I think of Dreamville and you guys. Yeah. Um, the core group to the artists that you guys sign, you guys all are just real. You know what mm. I'm saying? Real, real and down to earth and just a, a tight family knitted group. Like, and, and it's, it's, it's throughout your DNA from the clothing to, mm. to the cover arts to, to everything is just grassroots grind, work hard. You guys have continuously been able to, with the success, still been able to feel like the underdog and it just makes us yeah. root for you. I mean, it's, it's, it's really cause like, that's what it is. I think Cole, when you get the opportunity to like run your own label and get your own situation, there's pressure on like what you want to do and like what you want your legacy to be. And he went out and found other versions of him, like people, people who he thought should tell their story and were creative enough to tell their story <coughs> excuse me, in, um, in a, a specific way that he, he and, and his standards for his love of, of the art and the craft, he was like, oh, this is up to, this is up to par. This needs to be on a, on a larger scale. It's the opportunity that he wanted when he was a kid, learning how to be a rapper, learning how to be a musician and an artist. So it's like, you know, we let our artists do their thing, like tell your truth, you know, show the world your truth. Um, and every time they do that, we try to show them different things that we think could do better. Myself, like as a VP of marketing, like that's one of the things, like I realized, yo, niggas is old. We've been doing this shit for 10 years. And like, yeah, we have a blueprint that works, but like, yo, we have to change that blueprint. Like we have to figure out new ways to tap in we have to be we have to be aware that you know our peers are now um depending on who's talking for me specifically my peers are I'm 33 so my peers are 33 like that's yeah. not who moves the that's not who moves the needle who moves the needle is 13 14 so you know it's like it's knowing how do we speak to 14 year olds and 33 year olds at the same time and the best way to do that is for your artists for and this this is across every medium. It's just be truly who you are. Like, undoubtedly, just show the world who you are, 
um, make sure you go out there and make sure you you are heard and make sure you are telling people to focus you. I want you to focus on this and this is why. So we've done that shit. It's worked. And then, you know, as a company, it's like, yo, how can we, we, we proved that Cole was right. He was right. His music was supposed to be heard. You know, now my goal is to get our other artists into that same, same level of, of awareness in the world. Like I want Jid's music to be known around the world on the same level Cole's is and Ari and Boss and Earth Gang um, and all the way, you know, for the rest of the roster. Um, I want our clothes to be worn. And like every time somebody sees somebody wearing something that says Dreamville, I want them to feel like there's a sense of community. Same thing with the themes. Like we don't know how many times the kids run up on Boss and like, yo, I was in Belgium. And I randomly saw a kid in the Fiends tee and I ran up on him and like, yo, now that's the homie. Like he's coming to visit me out here and like, I'm gonna show him. And it's like, yo, that, that shit is like, I think Eve tweeted it. Uh, I think somebody was on the Serbian Serbian national team playing in, in Cole's Dreamers. And he was just like, yo, bro, that's fucking crazy. Like, <laughs> like to think that it like, it started with nigga freestyling on beats and it gets to niggas in the Olympics wearing sneakers that the nigga designed himself. That's, bro, that's insane. Like, like he, he like said, like whoever thought hip hop would take us this far. That's really the opportunity that we have, bro. It's it's shit is overwhelming. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, bro, but <laughs> and to do it and still and still have your integrity, like y'all keep yeah, your bro. integrity through the whole ride, bro. <clears throat> yeah, man. And who you are and, and never compromise in the music, the brand the people that are on it. And you see a lot of people with success, you know, they can get complacent and maybe follow the trend and start doing yeah, yeah. things out of character. But uh, you guys Shit. have stayed the course. Niggas lucky, niggas lucky I ain't J. Cole, is all I'm saying, bro. Cause you know, <laughs> my <laughs> integrity and, and my, my hair is just... <laughs> My shit might've been a little different. And it's, you know, it's, it's so funny. It's so funny. Like, uh, yeah, I remember the top, like it starts. Bro, from the it top. does because bro, that nigga's top, like bro. real shit. Like watching how niggas move, and it's all of our. Like I'll tell you this much: like working with all of our artists, I learned. Like I'm blessed to be around creative people like that. Like they see the world at such different, just lenses and rates, and it's just a different perspective to these niggas. Sometimes they're wild wrong, but sometimes they're they see shit that I can't see, bro. Like it's. It's like the Matrix shit. No, I don't see that. But like, wow, that's crazy that you put two and two together. So, um, yeah, man, it's it's like, shit. That shit is hard. But it's like, you know, at the same time, I'll never forget uh, somebody, like a girl, like posted a video of her twerking to a JID record. And we posted it on Dreamville, on Dreamville's Instagram. And in the comments, was like, this ain't Dreamville music. And JID was like, I don't know what the fuck you talking about. Because I'll sign a Dreamville and I'm a Dreamville rapper and this is some Dreamville shit. <laughs> and it's like, yo, that's like, <clears throat> that's like the evolution of it. It's like, yo, not every one of these niggas is cold. Like, that's right. what you have to understand. Like, yeah. there's a, a core, we're the same family, but like in the same, in your own family, there's going to be people that are wild different mm -hmm. than other people. And, you know, that's the one good thing about our artists is they're, they're expressive. They let you know, yo, this is who I like. Bro, everybody know our, how our feels about a lot of things and and that's a great thing everybody knows that you don't know who's gonna walk through that door where earth gang does but you know when earth gang walks through the door you know like it, it's everybody's is in their they're they're all their own people and like they're just all getting in their bag right now so yeah it's hard it's hard where um it's interesting because when you talk about like you know when you when you reference like you know who thought that hip-hop would take us this far like even i scroll back this is like it's kind of hilarious i scroll back to the beginning of like even like the fiends instagram like when's the last time you've looked at yeah. like the very first posts like the very first six posts y'all put up bro i have no clue what that would be <laughs> it's just know. like shitty old photos of like crumpled up weed and like blunts that were dropped yeah. in like you know mixer alcohol like juice at a club you know what i mean it's just like but you know what's funny is like <clears throat> the fiends really started as like a like a blog bro like a bar school <laughs> kind of blog that me and the homie wave yeah. would post on and like yo it became a thing at nyu bro we were hitting like fifty thousand unique visits a day and shit and we were just talking shit and sharing mm. just aggregating like the shit that we found funny on the internet 
and putting it up there. And bro, it just like it just like caught on like at NYU. That's where that's kind of where like the whole fiend shit started. Um and <laughs> like, but we always laugh because there's like shit we will never be able to put out, like old oh, freestyles and like just yeah. we were just wild ass young, like just young, wild and like dumb. Um, but yeah, that's where it started. And then, you know, when we were just like, there was a couple like ad ad agency homies and marketing homies and and creatives and shit, and we were just like, yo, like, let's try to like fucking be one of these ad agencies that we work at like what is the what does that look like in the future where you know instead of ford or or exxon or like fucking castro or all these accounts that i'm working on like what does it look like if you work with artists and right graphic designers and people that want to make clothes like what happens if you take the skills that we were learning this business model that we were shown in the ad world and apply it to creatives without the like pretentious old fuck stealing everybody's idea and money. And like, man, like same shit, it's been 10 years and like, we still haven't figured it out, but you know, we have two clients music wise that are, are moving. We have a bunch of other musicians that we help out here and there. And, you know, we're starting to pitch big brands that want to use us as a, as a creative, a creative uh, content production house. And it's like, shit, bro. Like, that's the shit we were literally getting high. Like, yo, what if we could do this? What if we could yeah, do that? Yeah. And it's like, bro, even the clothes, bro. I'm at Boss when we were like 13 in high school, like the first generation of like camp outside Nike SB niggas, right? And we always wanted our own shit. We always wanted to be supreme or Dave Quality meets or some shit. And niggas did it. Like, we're mm-hmm. not on that same level, but bro, if I wanted to, I could wear my own shit every single day. So, not like, fucking. 14 year old me is lit you know he's, Bro, he's geek it's hard because it's like and i'll just say like even working with you now when we talk like you say like yo 13 14 year olds are moving the need the meter you would only get that if you were one of those people at one point that yeah. really cared that way and really like you know like so to see it come that far bro before i knew what fiends was i was buying hoodies like i'm i remember i remember wearing the hoodie that like the hoodie that had like the the money symbol and the heart which is not even like yeah. the oldest one back and i was yeah. like what is this but i just know yeah. it's associated with people that like i fuck with you know what i mean yeah. like um so it's really like become an incredible thing but so you're from new york that's one thing i didn't know yeah. for sure you're because i know boss is from new york okay so you went to high school with boss that's pretty crazy yeah, i'm at, I'm yeah. at boss freshman year football tryouts bro first day uh... Yeah, I met that nigga, man. You play? I play left tackle and nose tackle. Wow, damn! Until every year, until one of my knees blew out, and then I was just on the yeah. sideline, I was cheering the homies out. Oh, <laughs> Bro, that was uh, yeah, man, fucking, it's it's crazy to see how a chance a chance encounter like that can like really change everything, right? Especially as a New York dig, it's like you kind of grow up being in one or two camps, which is all oh, I'm gonna be a rapper or like, bro, I'm not trying to be a fucking rapper, dude. Like there's fucking 9 million niggas trying to do this shit. And that's where I was at specifically, bro. Like I was trying to be like a, a lawyer, doctor, bro. I was just trying to not live in the jacks, you feel me? And fucking, to do all that shit, to go to NYU, to start applying to law school, then to circle back around and just be like, fuck it, I'm rocking with these rap niggas. It's like, that's something that, you know, it's serendipitous. I'm not going to say fate or like whatever like that, but bro, without me and Boss, I don't meet fucking his, Eve, his brother. We don't meet Cole. And then I don't meet like all my best friends that have all, like that I work with. And like, yeah. but I like think- some real, real deep shit. I think we all know that like every deep down, every music manager's dream is to like, my bad, my screen's fucking up, but every music manager's dream is to post pictures that kind of show like, yo, I've, I've been me and this person, you know, like this is my brother, brother. And like, of course people have great relationships and go back, but the core of y'all, like even knowing, thinking about you knowing Boz at 13, it's like, those are those rare cases that mm. do create a different bond. Like if me and my best friend at 13 were still working together today, it would just be different, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, and that doesn't, bro, doesn't bro, happen. That shit, is also, that shit is also hard, bro. Working with your friends yeah. is like one of the toughest things that you'll ever have to do. Like this shit yeah. is brutal, man. And it's like, it is, uh, 
it is a gift and a curse every single day. Um, yeah, because you but grow it, up, you know, and you guys, you know, you evolve, you know, and it's it's you you're not the same person, and it's just like yeah. Damn. I mean, it's it's like I'll put it this way, bro. Like I remember being a kid and my pet, my mom being like, yeah, "You wouldn't talk to one of your teachers like that," and I was like, "Yeah," because like. The niggas could kick me out of school. Like, they could fuck my <laughs> shit up. Like, you're stuck with me forever, mom. Like, what are you going to do? Like, and it's the same shit. That's, like, the same dynamic that kind of happens when you work with friends. And yeah, it's, like, very true. you know, you treat sometimes you treat the people you care the most about the worst. Or, like, you know, you 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 know you can get over, so you do X, Y, and Z. And it's, like, that shit, that shit fucking, it breeds tension. It could, get, it could really fuck shit up. But, you know, the yeah, best part about... The best part about like really being homies is you should be able to be honest and open and, and yeah. talk through any issues like that. Trust yeah. is everything, man. And and that's one thing that you can't buy. And you know, <clears throat> in business, when you trust somebody, you'll go through a wall for them. Real yeah. Time. But that's that's a manager's job, right? Is to care more than anybody. Sometimes you randomly <laughs> yeah. feel like you care more than the, than the artist. So when you have a relationship like that, you naturally do. Um yeah. You know, it, it goes back, it goes back even deeper than just when you sign up for the job. Um, Bro, but... I'm so happy I didn't, I didn't come into the music industry on some like label shit, like, mm -hmm. because it would, like what you just said, I wouldn't have ran through the walls for niggas, bro. Like, yeah, bro. I'll run through some walls for some bread, but like, you know, <laughs> the amount of, the amount of walls are going to, like, the thickness yeah. of how many walls I'll run through on some juggernaut shit, like, it really depends. Like, and it's like, bro, when you work for a corporation, you slowly start to realize, oh, nigga, I'm just like a number in a system. Like, these niggas, if I died today, Thursday, they'd be like, oh, this is the new Derek. Next. So it's like, um, it's like, you know, I don't know if I would have survived, if I don't know if I would have tapped in the way I have, if I would have came in through a big system like that, you know, but there's, you know, there's shit. I was just blessed that I did it. I think if yeah. I, if I, I don't even think I would have worked in music if I didn't happen to come through that back channel of, of being inside, inside of a, a family and being like, yo, my job is to try to help you be great and yeah. try to turn this shit into a business. I know pain can relate to this, but how many different jobs have you had for boss? Like, yeah. Like I, I, I know Payne can relate because Payne's done yeah. a lot of different yeah. jobs when his job was supposed to be one job. I right? seen I seen Payne move on tour, bro. I seen yeah, the same nah. shit. I mean that's when I when when we first met. I remember yeah. I, I was on tour and running around, and I could see it in your eyes that you <laughs> that yeah. you felt me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, there was there was times when. We were on tour, me and Boss, and I, this is no cap. I'm dead ass serious, right? My job every day was straight up, you know, you're, I'm a manager, so I have yeah. emails and shit to do. It's just like, you just got to do them, right? I mean, then you're a tour, a tour manager, which is like, let's make sure we get there. Production manager, which is like, all right, now I got to make sure all the equipment, everything is right. <laughs> then I got to go set the merch up, right? Then I'm also DJing. Like dead ass. I'm also the DJ and I'm the only nigga with a camera. So I'm trying to capture photos and video. Bro, this footage of me DJing on stage and also like filming, trying to make content. So it's yeah, like, content. and then I'm selling merch. That's the craziest part too. I'm like, maybe at the, maybe at the merch thing. And I'm like, running back there. And it's like, bro, people don't, people don't understand what that like, Good that shit is like, bro, you have to do that until it pays, it starts to pay for itself. Right. Yeah. And very true. It's like that shit takes a long time unless you hit the lotto with a yeah. with a record and you're going crazy and then you know hopefully you can sustain that shit. But them early days, bro, fucking nigga, I was buying draws. I'm the stylist. Fucking buying, bro. I've been the stylist on like mad music videos, just like running around in stores. Like, how about this? Fit? How about this? Fit? Making so it's like this, all types of shit, <laughs> nigga. It's like it's like you know, it's like the same shit. If you go to a tech startup, you know, employee two or three is gonna be doing whatever the fuck they need to do, and you know, hopefully they get equity and hopefully they go crazy in the future. I I, yeah. I remember the I just I watched the building blocks video and I was dying because you're like. I knew right away when you were moving people out of the way in the video, like you're acting in the yeah. video. I was like, yo, yeah. I know, I know he had like 80 jobs. I knew when I saw <laughs> that, I was like, yo, <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't give a 
fuck, dude. Like, especially yeah. at that point, bro, when we shot that video, bro, we had a, an apartment in Stuy Town in, uh, in Manhattan on mm-hmm. first and like 20. And it was a three bedroom apartment. We found that shit on Craigslist. We was paying like 3,600, but it was like a big ass three bedroom. Bro, we would have like, we were doing like fucking Born Center. Like there was a stretch of like four or five projects, all the truly yours is Born Center, Quarter Water Raised Me Too, where like, bro, we were just like, it would just be musicians coming in when me and my roommates were going to our like nine to five jobs and niggas was coming to sleep on the couch and shit, bro. Like it was like, and it was every day, bro. Like niggas is in the studio uh, premiere and in, in, in Times Square and shit till four in the morning and we leave and come back and I'm catching three hours and then running, running to an ad agency job and shit. And it's like, bro, at that point we shot the building blocks video in our apartment and like outside. And it's like, yo, it's hands on deck. It's hands on deck, at all, like all hands on deck at all times until you get to a point where it's like, you know, even as a manager, I had to be like, damn, bro, I have to not be DJing at Madison Square Garden. Like, this doesn't make no sense. Like, <laughs> this nigga Night Train, this nigga Night Train is way better than me as a DJ. And uh-huh. I have other shit that I have to try to go run and do if yeah. I'm going to be like the most I could be and, and, and help boss and help dream. But like, I got to sit at the crib. Like I can't go yeah. on tour no more. Like yeah. I could pull up on the weekends. I can't be there Monday through Thursday. I'm fucking, you know, having a blast. Like can't do that shit. So. And sometimes it just, it just get to that place where, you know, you, you know that you're, you're best used off the road and, and more useful and more <clears throat> valuable when yeah. you like, have some sleep and the, and, and the, the greatest part for me was like somebody always showed up like and that's yeah. that's the why one of the coolest things about us is like one of the homies always showed up when they needed a role like yeah. nitre made it made it known he walked into a, the first theme shop we did in la and was like y'all i want to rock with y'all i fuck with y'all and you know maddie p fucking when i was on the road every single day trying to rag, rag, like wrangle all the the artists he wanted a job. He came out there to work with, work with us, um, and working with Cole. And you know, now he's the head of head of uh, promotions at Dreamville. Like everybody steps up, um, you know, whether it's you know our homie Kev Stocks. He's one of the one of the homies. He came on the road, selling merch, driving driving fucking shit. I'm like, yo, what do you want to do with your life? He's like, I want to be a firefighter. Fucking now he's a firefighter in the FDNY. Like it's all like homies have always been able to step up into a role. And either that role becomes what they want to do, or while they're doing the role, they're able to figure out, all right, cool, this is what I want to go do. And it's like, but we just blessed that we got homies that can actually do that shit. Yeah, it's a blessing. All right. it's yeah. A blessing. How do you feel? I mean, obviously the team's grown in tremendous ways since the beginning, naturally, and and y'all have scaled. All the artists have gone up in in one way or another. But how do you feel like the um, like the core, like what's like the core process of those days? And then like, how do you feel like, especially for the artists that were there at the beginning, it seems like Boz and Cole really, like how is that process still the same to a degree? I mean, yo, like I'll put it this way. Like when Boz signed his record deal, like Apple Music didn't exist. <laughs> like yeah. and it's like it sounds crazy but oh. it just didn't it wasn't up there it was just Spotify right yeah. so you, you know even, nigga, yeah. like we found we found like CDs in the storage unit the other day were like dying laughing and it's like it's like it's still the same thing right it's still the same world we're still in the same universe but there's just so much more access and it's, it's, bro, there's so many songs that drop every Friday and so many albums that drop every Friday and like social media has kind of ruined uh, and not ruined, it's just changed the landscape as far as like publications actually having power and everything is direct to consumer now versus like going through gatekeepers, right? Like MTV used to be a gatekeeper and like you would brainwash kids into being like, this person is important, bro. Just being signed used to be like a brainwashing oh, thing, so, you know. Like so it used, it, <laughs> it used to be like um, a, just an, a, like yo, you have to pay attention. This nigga yeah. is signed, and it's like now it's like, especially knowing it from my side now, where it's like, 
nigga, I get 200 emails a day. Sign this nigga, sign this nigga, sign this nigga, sign this nigga. <laughs> and it's like, if I'm getting them and I'm not fucking, you know, one of the big three, big four labels, I know they're getting them crazy. Yeah. So, you know, for them, it's a game of like, let's put a little money here, let's put a little money there, let's spread it out. One of these niggas is going to hit. It's like, it's just like, it's like let, bro. Like, yeah, it's, it's like uh, they just putting chips down on the on the table. Um, oh, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, it's like, it's the same game, but it's different. They used to have to be an artist, and then they try to make you into like a a celebrity or like a pop star or like a personality. And it's like, bro, there's streamers now that are dropping albums that are doing numbers that niggas out here wish they could do, bro. Like so just. <laughs> I got 7 million followers. I'm dropping an album, nigga. I got Lil Wayne as my feature. Bro, go crazy, bro. Like, I can't even knock these niggas, bro. Like, go up. And it's like, it's like, a, that's what you're competing with. Like, unfortunately, the one thing I'd say is like, it's not a, the music is not as impactful as it used to be as far as like it being the key to you being heard or your message being like, yeah, you kind of have to like, be a personality more so than a good artist these days true, true. and but like yeah. that's a crazy it's a crazy thing it starts to get like because because usually you know dang i feel like an old nigga now but like yeah there was like in the 90s there were just like a group of just super talented yeah people yeah, yeah, all yeah. individually talented superior superiorly talented too in the R and B yeah. space and the hip hop space and the pop space, really talented. Bro. Yeah. And then, like as you know, as technology has come and as like the the, the social media and like the YouTube's and how, how technology has made it easier for um, people with not as much talent as you had to have back then to cut through and connect you know, fast too. Yeah. It's just like. Yeah. You know, it, it feels like it's getting every so now and then somebody slips through and it makes yeah, me yeah. super excited. <laughs> That's you know, you know, it's funny, man. It's like, it's the access, like anybody could put up a song now and go crazy. Right. Like that's like, right. bro, this kids that put out shit that's not mixed, not mastered, nothing. And it's going viral. Right. And yeah. it's like, we're over here, like mix 30, like, Oh no, nah, put the 808s like here. And it's like, bro, these niggas don't give a fuck. And it's just working. Right. And like it, I was watching like some like some the Motown doc, and I was watching these old shits, and I realized that like yo, you couldn't even push shit out. They yo, know, they're like half of the artists we know and love these days would not have been able to put out their music. They would have been fed into a system where their music would have became future single, right? Like it would have been fed up. It would have been fed up to the stars. That's what the internet did. Like it shattered that shit, and like. It's a gift and a curse. Like the cream mm. will rise, you'll still find goats, you'll still find the greats. But niggas is gonna get through and it's gonna be frustrating as hell when people that are really working and trying to put something together can't get, get the same success as you know, some but bro, you know what my favorite shit is? And it's Soldier Boy, bro. Like, bro, I was the I hated that nigga when he first came out, right? <laughs> like, bro, he's disrespectful. Like, I'm a back back in. Like, bro, I'm from New York, bro. Like, you already know the type of shit I was yeah, trying to yeah. listen to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, no, yeah, bro. So I'm hearing this nigga, and I'm like, it's disrespectful. And my boy Wave, and <laughs> he he was just like, yo, bro, if you were 16 years old, what would you rap about? You'd be rapping about a party in your Lambo too, bro. Like, straight <laughs> up. Like, that's it. And it's like, bro, the people laughing at Soldier Boy being, saying I'm the first to do this, I'm the first to do that. Bro, niggas don't respect what, like, that shit really is right. real. Yeah. Bro, that shit is real. Like the nigga was the first to do a lot of things. His sound, he as he's a genius, bro. Like his shit, he always for 20 years now it feels like he's reinvented himself and reinvented himself to the point where, bro, now he go on Twitch and smoke weed and freestyle and he has two hits out of that shit, bro. Freestyling on Twitch for a loop, it goes viral, and then he's like, fuck it, let's make this shit a song. Crazy, bro. Like nigga, I watch niggas slave over albums for two years. And two years, pen and pad, 70 song, 80 song, 90 song, bro, not going to see Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Rick, Rick, Rick. And that's like, bro, I don't even know what to do. That's just genius. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing 
I can do to mimic that until I hit my my moment. Until artist hits that moment of genius, don't even try to mimic it, dude. Like it's it's not you. Very true. No, but it, you know, as it you know, that's the the gift is I really do appreciate when an artist who's really really talented. Um, when the public embraces it because yeah. I rarely give the public enough credit to actually embrace anything that's like really authentic. You know yeah, what I'm bro. That's it it that's it. But that's, yeah. that's what used to be presented to the public because that's what people decided was pre- what was presented to the public. Yeah. You know, it was like the job used to be more about, you know, choose, not saying people don't think like this still to a degree, but choose literally look for the best thing that we can package up and present. And now it's what's already packaged itself to a degree that's clearly getting a reaction and then go yeah. find that. I mean, all right, put it this way, right? Think of our our current spectrum of, it's anything you can consume, right? So we'll focus on music. Think about right now, if I told you we can turn off the streaming, we could turn off the internet, uh, niggas can only listen to physicals of a CD, an album that drops once a once a month or whatever. You can you have radio and TV, and that's it, bro. You would you would change you would change like who you focused on, right? And like you would change who you would like. I could tell you if I showed you the list of artists right now, I could we could all say, all right, these are the ten artists we should focus on. Like right now, we both all three of us sat down and was like, yo, what 10 artists, if you could only listen to 10, would you push as a, as the hip hop industry? Our list, our, our list would be pretty similar. Yeah. That's why it's, that's why you were force fed something. Cause they had the meat, bro. Now for a label, bro, sign everybody. These kids find <laughs> their true. own shit. Like they that's find it themselves. True. They yeah. make It's just printing money. It's just like yeah. the same way niggas is in Robin Hood. I have no clue what this fucking company is, but I'll put up, I'll put 200 into it. I don't have mm-hmm. no clue what Dogecoin is. I have no clue what these cryptocurrencies are, but if we hype them, if we hype it up and they connect, that's money. Bro, that's how the labels look at niggas, bro. No, They're not looking I at this it. shit from a... Uh, bro, they don't look at this shit from an art sense anymore no. because, like, it went from, yo, we can only focus on selling 10 people or 10 products to, bro, the more products the merrier. These niggas will buy anything and everything all every single day. Because they truly understand it, like, although they might not fuck with it, there is a crowd. There's yeah. a crowd that's engaged. Yeah. <laughs> that, and, and that's like the, you know, that's really the change. And that's where Cole, Cole's era, the Kendricks, the, like yeah. that era is the era that changed that on a large scale large of, yo, scale. the internet is wide open now, bro. Yeah. Like, and it was just, it's a timing thing too. Like, bro, they didn't believe in that nigga. Like, think about, like, it, it sounds funny, but it's, like, up until that point, they were still using the formula. Bro, I was looking at, like, Jada Kiss, bro. Like, Jada, like, I was looking at his first album. I'm like, bro, that shit came out when I was, like, in eighth grade. I remember going, to, like, to basketball camp. And it was like, bro, I was thinking about, like, the street single and the, the crossover single formula. And I'm like, yo, that shit still works. They're still doing that. Like, yeah. These formulas still work on how to break artists, and like you realize that our art is commerce, and it's sad, but it's like it's part of the sh- part of the shits, man. No, yeah, and, and you know it's part of evolution, and you know that things are getting better, and it makes it um, it, it does make it make it a bit. But I don't know. Easy isn't always better, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It does, yeah. It does you know, take some of the the blocks out of a lot of artists' way who are talented to be able to put out yeah. their own product and be able to be compensated, um, you know, on their own terms. But at the same time, it's crazy, man. And then, like, bro, it's even like you know, you see it. You see it in like how artists, how serious specific artists take their craft versus other ones. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of that comes out. I like to watch performances, bro, because like at the end of the day, you know, you can make dope records, but if you can't go out there and, and form a visceral connection with your fans, like, oh, good luck, bro. Like them streams are going to stop eventually, bro. Like those, yeah. those, 
that the your joint that's going crazy right now that will eventually be gone. Our niggas gonna want to come back with three friends every single year to see what you're doing, and it's like because people people really invest in <clears throat> the person. They do. And people invest in the person being able to come back and be like, yo, since the last season, this right. is who I've become, and let me show you what I've been creating, and then then bro, and you see it, and you know, I think that you know that's one side of the industry that you don't see like i swear to god if you want to do anything in this music shit go watch that motown documentary because like they show you bro that shit is crazy Crazy. that shit's crazy it's like why would you pay to go to music business school just watch that shit bro they explain they explain the whole they they explain the whole industry they explain it they explain things in that two hours or the hour whatever it was that in my 11th year now i'm starting to realize as a record executive like oh shit like Damn, if you're not trying to take down the Beatles, why are we doing this shit? Like, you, like, you know, like, you have to try to take those niggas down. And it's like, it's like, you know, you, you see it, you see it, you see it, um, you see it in, uh, you see it in kids that, like, got a hit and then can't go on stage and perform. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. And no it's like, no one, showed, no, one showed, no one showed them, you know, yeah. like, we got to watch Cole every single night. And, you know, Cole got to watch Hove on a whole tour. Like right. you get to learn, you get to learn these things. And um, by learning those things, you give yourself an opportunity to be great. You know, there's artists in the last five years that I won't name that came out at the gate crazy. And then you go see them live and you're like, ooh, shit. That motherfucker could sing in the studio. She could sing in the studio. <laughs> But shit, you better bring a whole Ableton rig to all these shows and like you look scared up on that stage, you know? It's important to do those those small shows to even just like teach yourself how to perform. Like not skipping yeah. any steps on the live side is like super important. Because yeah, you get yeah. a hit, get a hit and then boom, you go perform that hit and then you understand like when you when you came out with that hit and you were introduced to the mainstream. The mainstream are, are now your fans. So now you have to yeah. feed those people. And those people don't yeah. only listen to the, the, you know, the playlist and the radio. So if you don't have yeah. anything on there, then you're done. Yeah. <laughs> bro, I, I remember the first couple of boss shows we were doing. Bro, you going out into a into like a, a theater opening for Cole, 5,000 people there. You're first of like three or four people. Niggas don't want to talk. Bro, come on, man. Yeah. They actually there to cut ass more so than anything, right? There's gonna be a couple. There's gonna be a couple people in there that want to find somebody new. Yeah. There's gonna be a couple diehard fans, and the most of them is there with their first drink ready. Like I'm in a good mood. I got a joke, bro. You know us, bro. You know our people and shit. Yeah. And um, you know Wayne Barrow, who's part of Cole's management, who worked with Biggie, with Mark Pitts, and and I remember him watching Boss shit and just being like, "Yo, bro, you halfway there, like." You have to be even more comfortable. You got to be the funny boss nigga that I know backstage, bro. Like yeah. that nigga needs to, you got to be up there cutting ass. And then that's when I realized that like in those first couple years, your 15 minutes set, eight of those minutes is telling jokes and working the crowd. Nice. So they will pay attention to <laughs> one minute of a song at a time. Cause that's all you got. And it's like, bro, you know, a lot of you see, you see all this shit after Rolling Loud where it's like, you know, people performing over vocal tracks and just standing there and blah, 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 It's like, yo, if no one's teaching these niggas, they're just not blessed like we were yeah. to have real OGs and be like, nah. Bro, yeah. they was talking about the locks and Dipset and like how Diddy used to make, yeah, bro, them niggas used to put niggas through artist camps, nigga. You know who does that shit now? It's like K-pop. Look how the K-pop niggas move. That's how Motown yeah. moved. That's yeah, how early saw, hip-hop moved. Saw how Jada was bringing it on the stage, yo. Bro, presence me just like watching her. Bro, fucking the the ability to rap without your vocal track means that you can switch the beat up and do crazy. Like, bro, oh, it's just like, it's like, it's shit like that, that like at the end of the day, if you don't, like fans know, bro, like fans yeah, will bro. buy in, fans will buy in and be a dedicated fan if they see you are a dedicated artist, dedicated craft, dedicated person too. Oh, that's real. Yeah. And it's like, I think today, a lot of artists, my bad, my screen is super messed up, but I think a lot of artists today, like when you're saying somebody gets a hit and then they have to go on the road or they get recognized for the music, then they have to go on the road. They almost, I wonder what, like how the fans are going to, if you don't have a certain type of personality, I feel like you, you got to be really careful with how the fans are going to react 
to the way that you fail in front of them. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Because you're going to fail. Yeah, yeah. You're going to not be great at first. You might be playing certain rooms and, you know, you're like, yo, I'm selling tickets or whatever because I got some music going up. But it's like, you know, if you don't handle that, like, early stage, yo, watch me get better thing the right way, you know, it's going to it's gonna be an interesting process right now seeing that especially, yeah. you know? It's, it's fun you say that, too, because, like, as, like, some, like, I used to DJ for Omen and Kaz. Like, when we used to bring out multiple people, I would just DJ for everybody. And, like, you would see it. Like, Omen is somebody that was, I've seen, like, shit go haywire. He just busted the hardest freestyle ever. I was like, bro, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't even know you could do that shit. And then someone like Kaz, like, I've had this conversation with him, like, where he's messed up. And then, like, he's apologizing on stage. And I'm like, yo, bro, first things first is the crowd never knows what's going on, bro. They have no clue you fucked up. All you got to do is, is, is fucking wheel up, bomb, 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 and then you're into the next shit. Like, it, it's easy. Bust acapella, bro. Like, there's always ways to handle that. And it's like, it's the same shit, bro. Like, he has me who's been able to watch for five, six years on the road and see pretty much every, bro, I've seen every type of person bomb. I've seen huge artists freak out. I've wow. seen, I've seen young, like, br brand new artists freak out. I've seen DJs fuck up. Like, yeah. um, I, rem I remember when, um, when we did that, that cold tour, like the, the, like, we sold. We did those smaller venues. It was for four. Uh, for, drive. For, uh, no, it was, drive for, for, it was for four your eyes only. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that's when uh, uh, I think it was like Loot, Earth Gang, and Jid. Jid. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And Ari came out with Cole. And yeah. Ari had a set too. And then right. And then she came out with Cole to. I think I think she skipped one of them. I don't remember uh, which run, but like yeah. she was on one of those runs. Like it was a yeah. three part tour. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember she was there, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming she had a, a whole set too. Oh no, she came out every night. She yeah. changed every single night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we did yeah, like, yeah. you know, we did, we went on the road for that, you know, those like 20 shows because it was like Jackson, Mississippi, converting like a, you yeah. know, uh, a restaurant into like a a, a venue, and Cole yeah. was doing arenas already, but now he's doing like, you know, he's selling out. Like some rooms are small, like from like thousand cap, right? But it was kind of like yeah. a special experience. But one night I'll never forget. Do you remember the Little Rock, Arkansas? I don't know if you were there when we booked. Like I a, wasn't there. Um, that was like the transition to like office there when I was like, oh, okay, okay. Right, fuck this, yeah, bro. We this had was... Maddie out. We had Maddie out on that. Yeah, one. I remember that Maddie was, his was first, there. Like, that yeah. was his first. You in charge? This is your game now, son. Like, yeah, yeah. I remember he was, was there. It was okay. So paint the picture because paint. I don't think you. I don't think you were there either. I was um, on the road. Oh, you're on the road. Yeah, yeah. So the show was basically in a tin box like you gotta mm. like you gotta remember like cole's doing arenas but he's doing this underplay yeah. to kind of create yeah. some hype and you know for his i'm only was like a really intimate project and um it's in like a, a 1000 2000 person kind of cap it's just a huge open empty room that's like a tin mm. box right yeah probably sounds terrible and shit but what happened was it was in the middle of the summer so mm, the condensation also... got crazy and then you had loot to um to i want to say jid to ari or whatever you know to cole yeah, yeah. i think jid was right before playing right before cole but by the time every artist the production got worse and worse because all the sound system got more and more messed getting... up from the condensation yeah. and so by the time cole came on it was like it was like my screen just now right it was like yeah, like yeah. choppy like messing up the sound and cole's set was like an hour and 15 or 20 minutes but he took two and a half hours to get through it and he remember him being to the crowd yeah. like yo we're gonna get through this like he was yeah, yeah. i remember sasha was freaking out because he was like yo i fucked this up like you know we fucked this up it's called we're like running around handing out waters to everybody trying to keep it straight yeah. and you know cole's like cole's cole you're like fuck we can't fuck this up but he went through the whole two and a half hours bro and just like got every time it fucked up he was like all right cool cool, cool hold on and then he right, like would right, go yeah. get the verse back you know he would he would fix bro, it man. yeah it's one thing that this one thing that that he and boss to have taught me is how to like humble myself because bro them niggas is just better people than me too like straight up like <laughs> yeah no oh well, sorry nigga sasha fucked up <laughs> I'm peace, on his ass. Like, peace guys like bro and it's like like i be getting mad at fans and shit too bro because i'm stressed bro i'm yeah, worried yeah, yeah. bro like yeah and like boss be like yo chill the fuck out nigga like yo put a smile on your face and it's like bro it's like it's like 
dude, like when we used to do the fucking the dollar and the dreams, you yeah. know, and like you know, we would know it'd be outrageous. This nigga would do a whole nother show. I'm like, nigga, I'm trying to get out of here, bro. Like, and it's like, nah, we're gonna do a whole nother show for the other two thousand kids outside. And it's yeah. like, dude, like that's two free shows. It's two I mean, free now, shows. Now, now has so, like, that been a struggle for you balancing the business and manager? role as far as like somebody who they trust on the business side but also yeah, yeah. they trust as a creative like giving yeah it sucks bro it sucks <laughs> because like bro and it's just like you know it's something that you have to understand when you're an executive of a record executive an ad executive anything anytime you run somebody that's creating art for commerce right like it's a delicate delicate relationship 100%. um but it's like sometimes i wish they would see the things that i see them themselves and sometimes they show me tact and things that I got to understand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get a $5 million bag from a shady dude in a shady country. Nigga, I'm on the jet, bro. I'm <laughs> telling you right now. And then, you know, three questions are asked and you're like, all right, you're right. We should not be doing that show. But once again, I wouldn't have asked the questions, bro. But that's just yeah. me. I would have been mm -hmm. like, yeah, uh, pick me up here, drop me up there. Um, <laughs> But it's like, you know, bro, you battle those questions all the time yeah. as as an executive. And um, that shit is, bro, it's like, you know, I care, bro. I care so yeah. much that, like, it's OD. Sometimes, like, you know, some now I'm at a point with certain artists where I'll be like, bro, do I care more than you, nigga? Like, what's yeah. up? Like, <laughs> like yeah. you know, like, now is a point where 12 years in, I could be like, yo, financially, you are fucking yourself and you're fucking me. Like, yeah. I, it shit gets real now because, like, I really do, especially in, in my role now where I'm getting more roles and, and insight. And it's like, yo, all right, why is this going to fuck on us? All right, cool. And you see the business of shit and you're just like, oh, all right, I see the business that y'all are playing. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. How can I, how can I ramp our shit up so it mm -hmm. fits into your business plans? So, fucking we can achieve what we want to achieve Definitely. and that shit is yeah i i see i see i see you kind of being in the middle you know like a, like a, like you're very much so a glue trying to make sure that yeah. the message keeps getting translated but each party you're translating it to it has to be brought a certain way you know like yeah especially it's like, with the artists it's like, yeah it's like make a sports analogy it's like you know you could be a great hooper but like when you're brought into a specific system you have to learn the system and play within the system in order to like you to be great and for your team to be great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's one thing to just make art, but you made a decision to make art, to make money. Like this is mm -hmm. your career. I always tell kids on the street, like, you know, you get the same shit out of it, man. Like when you were on the road, it's like, you know, what's some advice, what's some advice, what's some advice. And I'm just like, yo, here's the first piece of advice. Dude, if you're trying to be a rapper to make money, you're fucking up. I'm telling you this right now, bro. Learn to code. Go do some other shit, dude. Like, <laughs> Literally, nah, yeah. that's it, bro. If you think that you're like, bro, I'm a better rapper than most of y'all niggas, bro. Like, I could rap, bro, but I didn't want to do shit for my life. I don't have to get my songs to the world. I do not need to be heard as a rapper. I do mm -hmm. not need to be heard as a musician. That's why you should be wanting to be a musician. It's like, yo, I have to get this shit off my chest. Yeah, if I make zero dollars, or if that's I make real. $10 million, that's why I'm making music. And like, I tell them niggas that shit, bro, every single time, because it's like, you know, if you thought that you were gonna, you know, there's a misconception that like making music now and being a rapper now is like in the nineties, you might've made way more money and your lifestyle might've been way crazier then. It's not the same now. Like this shit is like a nine to five job, like dead ass. Like real it's time. not, it's a little comfy, a little comfier. If you're coming in at like maybe a, associate manager level instead of entry but you know it shit is you got to put the work in it you got to understand your business as an artist like learn your business bro how do you make money fuck the art like not in a bad way but like how do you make money how does your art make money how is it allowing you to like and then what are you going to look like in five years 10 years 20 years yeah when you is, when you can think like that too it actually helps the art weirdly get better because you start, like you said, especially when the key is the 5, 10, 15 years, because you got to think about the artist you want to be throughout those years. And if you wake up at some point, you might be 22 being like, this is cool, whatever, I'm, I'm good, or I'm 18. But if you think about it that way, you, you're going to wake up at some point and be like, 
this isn't really if you're not making a living if you're not making you know if you're not making it and building a career you want that's taking care of you then it's gonna it's gonna cause stress that you're not supposed to have as an artist anyway yeah. so you've got to learn how to fit within create a system that fits within a system really you know yeah. which i think is one thing that's impressive about dreamville it's like created a freaking company that exists within bigger companies that's still doing yeah. things that y'all were doing from day one like you even talk about a dollar and a dream and like doing extra free shows and it's like it weirdly reminds me of like the dreamer sneaker you know like yeah. every artist is out there trying to make like you know the 500 shoe that you can't get but it's like the 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 dreamer is like the cool sneaker that's being sold by a musician by a rapper but you can walk into Foot Locker and get it you yeah, know what i mean because it's for it's for yeah. hooper he told you yeah. who it's for it's the niggas yeah. that are still have hoop dreams like that's what like that's why and that literally that point is like what i be trying to explain to artists now when i work with them and it's like all right cool what is the goal of what we are trying to do right and like we could think about it we I always try to tell them like you know what's the macro grow and what's the micro grow like how are we going to think big what's the long tail plan and like what is this next step how does this next step fit in that long tail plan and it's like bro a lot of artists be like very very precious and like this is the one that's going to change my life i'll be like yo what if it's not though like that's okay mm -hmm. like this project could be the one that sets up the one that changes yeah. your life like mm -hmm. you have to you have to have like the right expectations and like you have to know who you're speaking to and we do this exercise every single time like who are you speaking to and why what is the success like what is some things that you're seeing around and it's like yo it's the same process that cole goes through with wave who now you know one of the og fiends that I started the blog with now he runs all the business for dreamer and puma um and you know that's a that's something that him and Cole and Eve go through. And it's like, you know, what is the goal of the dreamer one? What is the goal of the dreamer two? Why are we dropping the neon pack? Like, all right, for next year, like, you know, fucking Neymar and Pusilich and Melo and all these niggas are coming to Puma. Like, we want to work with those niggas and shit like that. Like, it's like, you know, you have to have a clear vision of what you want to do. And then you have to surround yourself with people that will help you execute those ideas and vision yeah no it's it's crazy i i sort of go back to kind of like where i started with you and the way you talk about ideas like i could feel like it'd probably be overwhelming for certain people at times on the team just yeah. because i can see especially with such a marketing brain to be like yo there's this and that and, I, and you start to see something that's happening and you're like this is important how do we make it work right yeah but then you got to translate it to a whole team or to an artist and that artist team and you got to make them kind of see the vision and then make that vision a version of their own or how does this work for this person so i'm curious especially because you've been there since it was literally you know a couple of people um yeah how do you kind of like what's that process sort of like for you and how do you how do you because it takes a lot like it takes a lot in any, in any trash. company it yeah. takes a lot to push that it's trash, through. bro. Yeah. And it's trash, it's trash because it's like, you know, if I do one thing, it's like nigga would just get lit and just think of shit, bro. And it's like, I'm good at it, bro. Like it's yeah. my gift. It's why I when I realized what I could be, I was like, oh, that actually plays to my to my strengths. I could look on the field, I could look on the court, I could learn a game and be like, all right, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? Why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? But with that, two things happen, right? You get stuck in the why don't we do this shit and you're not doing enough stuff and then sometimes the volume approach you say so many things that people sometimes don't listen to the specific things that you're saying and it just becomes oh another thing mm -hmm. and then i would see things that i've said start to come through other channels outside and then when them when they come in from somebody brand new it's a it's like oh yeah let's do that and it's like motherfucker i said that shit like what <laughs> like what yeah. and it you know so it's like you know for me, I've been able, I've been lucky enough to have people come into the game, into my life that have showed me how to get better at that. And like, yo, like I say, I'm in my 11th, 12th year at this shit, bro. I'm, I'm like just getting through my first internship. And that's what I realized, right? Like, mm -hmm. doesn't matter where I live and my lifestyle and all this shit is great, bro. I've seen the world. I've done all this shit. And I still am looking at it as a 33 year old, like, yo, bro, I'm like, I'm just starting to, to, 
I'm like barely starting to be able to learn enough work ethic and discipline to actually maybe get to where I could be one day. And it's like, you know, just even the idea of like, you, you could come up with 30 ideas, but if all of them just stay in your iPhone notes app, and then you just start to see them one by one check off in real life, it's like, bro, who you mad at? Like, yeah. that's, that's the hardest shit. Um, and then, you know, sometimes when you're working with people, they don't see the things you see. Like, they can't dream as big as you. Um, it's not as scary to me. So some of the shit that I see is not as scary to me as it is to an artist or to my boss or to somebody else. Um, I could easily be like, yo, let's just spend $5 million on that. And it's like, bro, it's not my $5 million. That's why it's so easy to be like, just yeah. spend $5 million on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you got to learn how to get your message across. Um, it's tough, bro. Game of Thrones, nigga. That's the one thing I tell niggas. Like, sometimes to get your idea through, you're not the one delivering it. You got to get that idea to one specific person so that one specific person gas them up yeah. so that one specific person can go on that motherfucker and pitch that idea. And then, like, then you, ego-wise, have to be cool with sharing the success. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Um, Don't even work. Bro, half of my day is just putting niggas on and just being like, oh, go crazy. You tell them. You tell them. Because it's like, yeah. dude, that builds camaraderie. That builds fucking energy. That gives. That gives. If I do somebody's whole job and let them take the W, that means that they're like, "Oh shit, I could fucking do this." Like, mm -hmm. you know, like that shit is hard, bro. Communication is like the toughest shit about being human, just because we could fucking do it so well and do it so poorly, and there's no reason, if ands or buts, why it changes within every single minute. Um, it takes. So it's just like. It's definitely like communication is one of those pro. Like the way that I could communicate at my core is like how i was as a child like you know what i mean like that's the thing yeah. you have to get better at it because to like speak in terms that's maybe a little relatable to what we do like as a, a manager let's say right or someone that works with artists you have an idea and we know what it feels like to push that idea to an artist and be like no i promise you this is important or to a team around that artist like i promise you and when they don't want to listen to or hear it because they're just or not even not listening, but it's like, it's, it's not some fully clicked yet. Right. Like the vision for it hasn't fully come through. You almost are putting this position to of being like, yo, do I sound crazy? Do the, like, am I yeah. just not cool enough? Like, like are these yeah. people just cooler than me? Like it is what it is. And you got to get super crafty in how you kind of present and get that yeah. thing. It's inception. It's game of Thrones. Like you said, you know, it's like, cause I was that's actually about to yeah. ask you, yeah. How would you sum up your style of marketing in one word? Oh, bro, it's it's that. It, I think that Inception is a great. It's funny you say that, Troy, because that's my favorite shit. Because it works on two levels, right? It works in the corporate place when you know who you're working with. Mm -hmm. If you can get somebody, a boss or whatever, somebody that's a decision maker to think of that they came up with it or it's their idea, bro, yeah. you're good, man. I'll be throwing <laughs> seeds out there like. All right, in two weeks, I'm going to come back and I'm going to say this and it's going to bring and he's going to be like, oh, yo, why don't we do X, Y, and Z? And it's like, you know, I say that because like, bro, sometimes people are scared. Like when when you when you bring ideas that are risky, sometimes they get scared of that shit. And then yeah. the other way with fans, <laughs> it's the same shit, bro. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's not a malicious thing when I say inception from a marketing perspective. Of you know when I, yo, you know when I, you know, you know, it's so funny. I just started to realize this shit on Twitter. It's like I follow this one handle, Fat Kid Deals, and they do it. They do this inception shit great. Where like you won't really be perceiving the message, which is yo, you should buy these 100% uh, metal alloy tongue scrapers because your breast stinks. You don't, you don't think about it. You don't think about it, and then. You, you, I see it. I scroll past it. I scroll past it. I scroll past it. And then I just be like, damn, I think my breath. You know what I need? Like maybe like a 100% metal, like tongue scraper. And it's like, bro, like that's, that's marketing at its core. And it's like, you know, we have good artists that are able to put those messages in their music, in their way they craft their projects, in their visuals that bring out these narratives to the fans naturally. And like, 
you know, it's hard to do. And like, it, you, it's funny. There's like a knock against Dreamboat fans for like, oh, they, they think they're so smart and like they, they blah blah <laughs> blah. And it's like, yo, it's more about passion and yeah. caring so much that they're diving in so deep. Like they're they're just trying to understand versus some people don't want to fucking think too much when they're listening to music, nigga. I'm here for the Casamigos and the turn up. Like I'm not here to hear about your struggles, bro. Like I don't want to hear it. I don't want to be inspired. I just want to turn up. And it's like, that's like that, that, that second layer of inception, bro. There's been times where kids will see shit in music videos and like paragraphs of like the re the reasoning. And we're like, damn, that's good. We should have thought of that shit. But you know, like yeah. that's that, in that's that shit that like, if you could figure it out from a marketing style, like that shit's fucking awesome. Yeah. Sometimes it just takes the right, a trusted cosign you know you speak about something different and you're like maybe if yeah. this person speaks about it like you said a fresh mind or whatever it becomes yeah. becomes a little different um yeah no it's interesting it's interesting the the like the the dreamville fan thing is so funny because i told you this and pain pain knows and i think pain was in the same pain is in the same category because now i remember yeah. how pain met sasha which was when sasha was sitting with cole and he yeah. fanned out right but i yeah like I, I i like i started as a fan like that's jet like before i ever worked in music you know i like wasn't in yeah. music i was a fan of dreamville my biggest fan you know colt with cole's my favorite artist of all time like that's how it how it was for me and i like imagined for some reason just everything i saw about dreamville was like yo i just think it's like a i just i want to know where that place is like where is dreamville like i thought of it yeah. as a place you know and and now it kind of is like it's it and it probably feels a little harder on a day-to-day -day basis but it, it comes to life more and more just through everything you're doing through every single artist being their own brand within dreamville through you yeah. know f through fiends through boz as an individual like it just comes more and more to life um yeah. through the festival you know like there's all those sort of things you gotta gotta build your cinematic universe bro just like marvel dude they made all mm -hmm. made a world in 10 years that we all you know if you're paying attention you know all the intricacies you know all the storylines you know all the narratives you're you'll still crossing bro and it's like you know you'll jump into some brand new shit just because like fucking you know it's close side here's a yo here's some shit for you marketing nerds out there Bro, go look up Walt Disney's original plan, right? Yeah, awesome. Just Google it. Go, bro, just Google that shit and look at that image. And like, bro, the depth of like the fact that that nigga was coming up with that shit without the internet. Like he didn't have the internet. He didn't know about amusement parks. He didn't know about none of this shit. And he made all that shit happen. Crazy. Go look at the Motown shit. Look at how they sketched out their business model and their business plan. It's the same shit, bro. It's looking at it and and go watch Game of Thrones because, you know, those first couple seasons will really teach you how to like the whole premise of like, oh, this shit is a game. Everybody you're fucking with is in that same game and everybody has a different definition of how they're going to win the game that's being played. And there's millions of games being played at all times. And bro, you got to like really attack life, your goals, your dreams, everything like that shit. Or, you know, it's not, it's just not going to fucking... It's not going to work. And that's like the beauty of where I'm at now, where Fiends are at, where Dreamville is at. It's like, bro, we're in the thick of it. Like, in the thick of it. Like, we're right into that shit, bro. Like, anything now that we do as we build out this mat of like, yo, here's what we want to do. We want to do podcasts. We want to sell. We've done so much unscripted shit with Dreamville. First, first rapper, rapper documentary on HBO um you know we've done documentaries on fucking nebraska and like the redlining of the districts and gerrymandering and like shit like that bro like we've done podcasts with boss about rwanda like we've done all this stuff that's unscripted all right shit now we want to do scripted we want to take that same energy and even all of our music is pretty much unscripted right this is mm -hmm. like life experience shit. can you take that and pivot it into the scripted world and you know certain people have done that shit amazingly certain people haven't but it's like, you know, there's that, there's apparel, there's a festival, there's all these different things that we have the opportunity, like Cole's music gave us the opportunity to try, like to make these things come to fruition, to make these ideas possible. Yeah. Um, I think it's at an we just gotta do it. We just gotta do it now. Yeah. And it's at an interesting point with the artists because it's like each artist 
like I said, I think they're like crafting their own brands in a real way. And, and now I feel like it's just on the bubble of like them break, like Cole, obviously as like, it's like when Maverick there's, I forget what it was, but in a weird way, Dreamville is the only like music company started by an artist in like this current time right now that feels even comparable to like the lebron situation where it's like all the people around him you know you could even like i know it's not the same thing but even like the players that he signs you know um to clutch or like you know as put rich paul on to whoever else they're helping but there's like this commercial or this espn episode where maverick's like kind of identifying everybody's role like lebron's the human platform and it's like yeah cole's obviously the human platform right but you're starting to be at this point because of the nature of it being a label about artists too, that like, they're kind of breaking to their own. Like, you know, you see it with, yeah. with, with all of them. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, that's, what, that's what we want. And yeah. it's, it's funny. Cause like what you say with the platform, like, you know, Cole said it on, on that joint with hope, like platform, then apply hope, be given yeah. the platform. It's the same shit. It's uh, like, and you know, that's kind of, what he did, bro. We watched Rock Nation, bro. You don't think I've been watching Rock Nation? I went mm-hmm. to school for sports. I went to school for sports marketing, yeah. and I remember fucking like Master P signing like Ricky Williams. I always thought that there was a, a crossover between our culture and being able to dominate in that world. Like, why wouldn't we be wrecked by our own niggas? Like, why would it be you know like fucking fat cat white agents? Like, why wouldn't it be our, like people that look like us? So yeah. seeing Rock Nation grow and like seeing them be able to like, bro, they bought some of our favorite streetwear brands ever. Now they were like, all right, cool. We're going to be a huge sports agency. Boom. All right, cool. Now we're going to rep fucking directors and, and try to make Hollywood. But like, bro, that's just inspiring as hell because mm-hmm. it's like, bro, I'm going to bring it back to what we said earlier, Troy, which is like, unless you were one of them niggas in high school, one of those cool kids in high school. You don't really know that, like that pressure of being like, oh, I got to be ahead of the curve on everything, right? And like, at the end of the day, I just look at the core of marketing is pretty much like, it's just the high school cafeteria. Like all of the world is in the high school cafeteria. You see it in music, you see it in, music is my favorite shit because I live it every day. I literally feel like I'm in high school. Every time we go out, such and such is there, such and such is there, such and such is there. It's like fucking the joke. But it's like, you know, I call... Um, and this, I'm about to trademark this shit for my NYU course on advertising, but I call the like the 14 year old black kid is the holy grail of marketing. Like if you get them to buy into your shit and say that that's the coolest shit, yo, there's a ripple effect that just goes. You get all the kids around them, then you get all the kids, and then it's like the black kids show the white kids what's cool, the white kids show all the rest of the white kids what's cool, and then we fuck them with pop culture, and then you're lit, bro. Yes, queen. Like, yeah, that was a fucking probably a 14 year old black girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of the I'm the Savage dances. Who was that? I was like, bro, I'll never forget watching Charlie Fiamo do that fucking mm-hmm. Renegade dance. Looking up who made Renegade. Yeah. Right. Like, how was she listening to this random ass K Camp song? Yeah. How did she find this? I didn't find this shit and I worked in this shit. I think it's on my same label. <laughs> of course, it was some little girl in Atlanta. Like, that was a fucking 12 year old black girl. That's like, if you can understand that shit, bro, there's a reason why. You know, Polo, Ralph Lauren put out ugly shit, but it's the hardest shit. It's because niggas was like, yo, this is the shit. Like, North Face. Like, they they probably wake up every day and just thank God that black kids wanted to wear North Face and, like, made it super popular in pop culture and not just with people that want to ski. So it's like, you know, that's shit, bro. The the best news I heard this week was one of the homies, uh, his girl's cousin, he was hanging out with her and... She was like, uh, the kid, the, the cousin was just like, yo, all the kids in my school know the Jackie, man. They all sing that shit. Mm. And I was like, oh, damn, we might be out of here, bro. Like, if the little 13, 14 year old kids is fucking with that shit, that's yeah. what you want, bro. Oh. When the Dreamville fans are mad, like, oh, you know, I wanted something deeper. I'm like, yeah, so bro, good. let's go. We're outside <laughs> of our ecosystem, bro. This is what I'm trying. This is, you know, that's what you want to yeah. do. You want to carve into a new lane. Nigga, man. Box making hits, nigga. What's yeah. up? Like, you know, you need that. Yeah. Yeah. Payne, um, I don't know if you have anything else necessarily, but I got like I got a question. Um I got I got one more question, really. Um, and I think that there's obviously a lot more we could dive into. Um, but I, I really like where we're at. I think 
just especially because of how far back y'all go and how far back, like, I mean, you're talking about Bo, knowing Boz when you were 13. So I'm assuming you knew Eve around the same age. You met Cole yeah. when Eve met Cole. Like, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was a little bit of, little bit of a delay because, like, Eve was older than us and went right. to one of our, our, uh, he went to our rival high school, so we didn't end up going to this. Me and Boss went to one high school, and Eve oh, was okay, rival. okay. So like, I got into like me and Eve started to really hang out more like towards the end of like my high school, like early college. Like I remember him and Cole pulling up to like me and Bo- like Boss throwing parties, and them being like, "Oh, that nigga's crazy!" Like that's been us, like our our rep the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I met Cole through Eve. Oh, I'm gonna be a rapper. I'm like, yeah, wanna. Mm-hmm. Just like yeah, everybody I'm else, close. I know. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, oh, this nigga's nice. Like you know, like that. That was that whole when, process. When did you know he was nice, though? What was Bro, the what was the, you, what yeah, was the that, bar that, that, that you was right like, now. hold on. Yeah. This nigga is not right now, one of my niggas that know I, that. that I tell you right now, bro. I remember, bro. They used to do all these cypher shits at boss parties. I was trying to get drunk and find some hoes, bro. Like I never got out the crib. My parents were mad strict. So niggas is freestyling. I'm like, no, I don't want to fucking listen to niggas. I'm imagining him in that like huge brown shirt. You know that video of him when he's like 14 and he walks out? Polos. polos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's too Polos and boat shoes and shit, nigga. It was, it was, it was, it was that weird energy, like rock star belts and shit. Like that's, that's that time frame, right? Like that fucking 05, 06 shit. 04, 05. And fucking. I remember, I hold on the, the the I knew on the warm up to the warm up, right? That was the first time I really listened to to Cole's music because like he was just literally somebody I saw. I really didn't like I didn't have a relationship with him like Boss did because they used to like really hoop and hang out and shit. Yeah. I was at NYU, they were still in Queens, yeah. but Bob, me, Boss, and then two of our other homies from high school would link. You know, play Halo, fucking Call of Duty, yeah. Gears of War, go watch fucking Marvel movies, whatever. Whenever I would come back to Queens from the city, um, and Boss gave me the one, gave me like five copies of the warm up to the warm up. No, the and was up. like, yo, yeah. no. See, that's what people don't know. There was a warm come up. up. The, oh, there yeah, was a, yes, the there was a demo. There's yeah, a, de- yeah, there's a demo out yeah. there. Are those songs on warm-up. other projects now? No, bro. Oh, some of no, no, my too, favorite, no. some of my favorite cold songs yeah. ever that won me over are on that project. Yeah. Um, and fucking he was like, here's five CDs. And like, bro, like I've literally grew up with niggas trying to give you CDs. Right. You know, take it, take it. And I need twenty dollars, need twenty dollars. So bro, like in my it's in my DNA to be like, nigga, get that shit away from me. I don't want that shit. Yeah, of course. It's the same way up in New York. the same way I get. I get emails now, like, check my shit out. My art is like the same. Like, ah, get away from me. Like, I don't want to listen to that. Yeah. But I remember taking it back to my dorm. It's my just started to smoke weed, bro. I was finally at my parents' crib. Yeah. I had my own single at NYU dorm. Just it's a good me. feeling, too, when you just start. Bro, like, if you really bro, love it. it yeah. Great, bro, it was great. And, like, yeah. bro, I remember listening to it, to the shit front to back. And I was just like, yo. That was good, man. That was pretty good, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. and then I listened to it. I listened to it again, and I was like, dude, am I just like, am I dick riding? Like, yeah. am I just, be, am I straight just dick riding? Like, I, I know this nigga, so yeah, I can't, like, I, can't be I, this I like, old, bro. I'm yeah. a New York nigga, bro. So I'm a New York nigga, so like, I'm not gonna give you your shine, bro. I'm, and then it's just like, yo, are you a dick rider, bro? I remember being like, yo, man, like, he's not that nice. So then, like, bro, this is my test, bro. There was like three white boys from my college, right? right. That I knew that I had bonded with because they were like hip hop nerds, bro. Like yeah. OD, like annoying. Like I love hip hop. Like it's a yeah. live and breathe. It is my culture. But these niggas yeah. is like, you know, like OD Joe Budden stands and yeah. like fucking Max B Dipset stands. Like, you know, like, and I was like, all right, I'm going to give these three niggas the three CDs I have and I'm going to ask them their opinion. And all of them came back like, yo, who the fuck is this dude? And it was in that moment I was like, all right, cool. And it's like, that's my whole, that's my whole process in life. Yeah. I have a strong inclination that something that I found is dope. Who are three people that I trust their perspective and I trust them to like be able to analyze something. I gave it to them niggas. They were like, yo, this shit is dope. Uh-huh. I came back and I was like, yo, this nigga is the truth. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? Like, how do we, like, can I help? Like, yeah. what should we be doing, boss? If this nigga gets rich, we're gonna be able to get rich somehow. Like, should we be selling beats? Like, what should we be doing? Like, and immediately, I yeah. immediately went into a place where where it and 
like, you know, it booked the first show, my first concert I ever booked was at NYU because they needed to show Rock Nation that Cole could fucking perform. Yeah. This shit sold out because for fucking a year, I'm walking into every party. Nobody's checking my big black ass at NYU. Walking in every party, putting on a fucking mixtape. You know what I'm saying? Just killing the vibe. Like, Cole's trying to dance this shit to like fucking, fucking ratchet shit. And I'm like, nah, y'all gonna listen to this shit. And it's like, bro, nigga sold a thousand tickets in like five minutes that's before cool. he put out an album and shit. And that's just off the strength of like, you know, going everywhere. But yeah, bro, it was boss, bro. And you know, like most shit in Dreamville, you know, boss has been running through the door, waving the flag, gave me them fucking, gave me them joints. I think we were probably playing like Halo 3, just cushioning and listening and listening. And I was just like, damn, this nigga is actually really good. And then I haven't looked back, bro. Damn, God. Yeah. My question was going to be, tell me a, a fuck it, this is crazy moment, but I think that's, I think that's it. Bro, you I, don't know? Know, I don't even have time, dude. Yeah, like, but like, how do you even like... I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Fucking Jay-Z, Beyonce, nigga, like... <laughs> now nah, we got to yeah. save that. We got to save all that. All right, you want to hear a funny, you want to yeah, hear a yeah. funny story yeah. that's not, it's like, <laughs> this one's, this one is safe and it's good. So we're doing Lala, right? <laughs> we're doing Lala Palooza and... Bro, once you, if you know me, I'll be turned. So as soon as yeah. my job is done, what's up? We're at a lot of losing, nigga. I don't know about <laughs> job, but I'm trying to turn it up. Yeah. So I, I'm big fucked up, right? We're right. big fucked up. And we, yo, we'll be the fiend. We'll be like 30 deep. Like every like homies will flying wherever we're at. And like we'll be squad, just having a good time, bro. Like you don't get to share these moments. So we're at Lollapalooza. We're all lined up to watch Alina Baraz. Niggas is faded. Mm -hmm. Niggas might, you know, off the shits, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. And like <laughs> I remember looking to the to the left and like, oh, you gotta, oh shun, the feds is on me, bro. Like, and then I look to the right and I'm like, oh my god, bro, the feds are everywhere. Like, and like, you know, you know when you see fed. Yeah. And then I take one more look and it's like, Sasha and Malia Obama, <laughs> like just standing standing right there oh, watching dude. Alina Barraza, and I'm like, bro. I'm tripping, thinking these niggas is coming for me. Yeah. My little back was in place and shit. And it's like, no, nigga, these are secret service. They're for real. And then, bro, yeah. I'm off like, I'm off a mile. It's just like, and then you start to see the perimeter where there's like, oh my God, there's 40 of these niggas that I didn't notice until I started to like stare. You think they're like, coming after your weed. Bro, I'm, I mean, it's like, no, there's a black princess next yeah, to you right watching right. fucking Alina Baraz, my yeah. nigga. That's, that's who they're there protecting. Mm -hmm. But it's like, bro, man, it's, I'm blessed, bro, from the biggest hoopers in the world to like all the shit that I love, I'm constantly being able to interact with. And like, you know, the, the best part now is like, it's not meeting cool people. Now it's the opportunities. Like, bro, if I want to make trying to sell a TV show that me and my best friend wrote. And it's because of me being exposed to us making TV shows that like in my free time, I always tell niggas like nine to five, if you have a nine to five, you're blessed, bro. Thank you. Even if you hate it, you're blessed. But five to nine, what are you going to do? Like, what yeah. are you doing five to nine? Yeah. Like, cause yeah. that's where, that's where your career made, bro. That's where your future is made. That's and cool. you know, the crazy shit about this shit is I have the opportunity to do anything that I want, bro. Yeah. Literally anything. I like, tomorrow i could quit this shit tomorrow dab everybody up and be like i love y'all thank you and i could go try something brand new man it's yeah. it definitely is and you know you guys are in that place where it's been a long journey already but you're just pushing into those other boundaries really heavily yeah. so you know that those opportunities are just going to get bigger and bigger you know with everything yeah. that's going on, the podcast like you're talking about, the shy league, you know, the the yeah, connection bro. getting stronger and stronger to athletes, um, you know, the artists getting bigger and bigger. So, I'm about incredible. to be on my Jerry Maguire shit, like two years, bro. I'm gonna make that degree count, bro. bro I see it. I always say, I always say this because you were talking about, you know, being like, oh, I'm 33, whatever. But, bro, the CEO of Endeavor, Ari Gold, started Endeavor at the age of 33. That was him yeah, and bro. six people left jobs as agents as you know productive high firing agents but not super successful and went and right. started endeavor you know so all it takes all it takes is your yeah. squad and a vision bro That's it. That's all it mm -hmm. take. yeah yeah it's crazy well derek i appreciate this uh, um, boys. yeah for real for real man it was a great conversation yeah your energy's amazing, man thank you for always i'm, I'm here man 
bro. I'm here, bro. Appreciate appreciate y'all. It's funny, just bro. I remember meeting both y'all niggas. Look at us now, right? Bro, it's crazy how that works. Like I tell you, I remember opening my eyes, and you know Sasha, like he's when he's on the road, he's like, he's like, bro, why don't you go to sleep? Like he becomes a crazy yeah. person, you know. And especially because he's like, yo, I gotta make sure all the dreamful people are good and whatever. Open my eyes at two a.m. I'm like, yo, tell this guy to get out of the room. Like you know, what I mean? that's how I'm feeling. <laughs> bro, man, you could tell. You could talk to every single person yeah. I work with. They'd be like, bro, if that nigga has a couple too many couple shots, that shit is overwhelming. <laughs> and it's like, bro, I just. Yeah. Uh, when you see it, just you gotta. I get hype, bro. Find somebody like me that's gonna gas you up. Cause no, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta go for it, bro. For real, and I'm great. I'm grateful that you know we're getting to to get this working all the time regularly. So thank you again. Um, let's do this again soon. All right, all right peace, y'all. All right, peace, y'all.